I ain't know I got that much love when I played. Well, I did get a lot of love. And you know who ain't getting no love? Ain't no love for the little baby Gronk. Why well, keep calling him little baby and then Gronk, right? Just call him baby Gronk. Well, he need to tell his daddy to sit down somewhere because he ain't making this any better. Now, full disclosure, uh, baby Gronk reached out to me maybe a year or two ago. Um, I didn't know who he was. And as recent as this week, he wants to do an interview as well. So maybe we'll have baby Gronk on here, right? Or at least his daddy. I don't know how it plays right now, but I've been in contact with them at least a year or two. It feels like I'll go through my DMs and check it out. But it's pretty cool to watch a little kid to me on the rise, but I'll get to that later. Madden, his name, Madden San Miguel. All right, whatever's Madden San Miguel is, I guess. That's his name on social media, Baby Gronk. Damn, he named him after a casino, it sounds like. Madden San Miguel <laughs> has gained more media attention after his father was featured in a story last week in The Athletic. So the mixed reviews, and mix, mix is never 50-50, y'all. Y'all know how social media is. You get a thousand good compliments and likes. Then you get about 30 people hating on you, and we say that's mixed reviews. Really, we just focus in on the negative. But... We know what's going on here. There are comments building about his 10 year old son's social media profile that turned bad when the two appeared on Bring the Juice podcast. So there's a clip out there that went viral talking about what the host and his father were engaging in. So one of the hosts asked the fourth grade social media star, that's how he's termed now, are you him? And Madden responded with a polite yes. I mean, he's 10. That's what else he's supposed to say. And he, after he responded, his father was like, nah, he chimed in. Said, let me give it to you the way he's supposed to answer it. A better answer. Ask that again, bro. Okay. When daddy is there in front of son and son is 10 and son is really the engine of this. He's really the horse pulling the carriage, right? And then you hit him with a bro. I ain't even got to know no more. I know where this is going, but let's talk through it. Ask that again, bro. And say, man. What kind of question is that? You seen my Instagram? Jake San Manguel said, that's what he said, which his son repeated. Okay, like father, like son. Baby Gronk then was asked about taking LSU gymnast Olivia Dunn, we all know her, to the prom and his father fed his son another answer. Here you go. No, these are not vegetables. These are the words that you need to say. So the entire interview appeared to be playful with everyone laughing and chuckling because it's always uncomfortable around people, even if you're sitting there, unless you're Charlemagne the God or like me or like 18 other people. Most interviews, even when you don't like something, they wait until you leave. And Van Lathan, let's add Van Lathan in there. Good Lord, Van don't give a damn. But it didn't resonate across social media, this interview right here. So little baby Gronk has done interviews and been in the limelight, posting videos of himself for years and now he has 300,000 followers. Pictures with Aaron Judge, Mark Wahlberg, Olivia Dunn, etc. right? And it's playing out now as his father was saying. His father said, I've had a plan for my son since before he was born. It's not just for content. We put five or six days a week of training. He diets. Mm. I did it too, so let me not sit there and throw stones. He eats clean food, salmon and brown rice. He's in a routine, he's a real athlete. He's not a normal kid, normal kids are emotional. They put their head down when they make mistakes, talk back to the coaches, they make noises, but he doesn't do that. He has been trained and programmed since he was six years old. Damn, pa Pajan Todd Marinovich right now. And if y'all don't know who Todd Marinovich is, he was programmed since a little kid. And he got to the league and uh, he aborted that program pretty fast because it wasn't coming from within. It wasn't him actually the one loving what he was doing. It was being driven by his father who now was using him as the mechanism, right? Living through him vicariously. And then finally, when it became about you, you gotta go do it now. Daddy can't help you anymore. He didn't wanna help himself. 
Be very careful here, San Miguel. All right, so he says that right now his son's making $100,000 a year and is putting it away so he can have a future even if he doesn't turn pro. Now, I hate to be a hater, but I doubt he's putting it away. You wanna know why? Because anytime you lean this heavy on your son in the respect that he's doing it, trust me, you're doing it because you're living through your son. So when you reap the rewards, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna live through the rewards as well. You think you're gonna do all of this and just put it up. But I am not privy to all that knowledge, but we will talk through it. So he says, just keep stacking up, being a part of companies, this and that. By the time he's a senior in high school, he's a millionaire and above, and he's well taken care of. That way he can live a good life without struggle or worry. Mm. Let me just tell you something. You get you a million dollars, you're still going to have some struggles <laughs> and you're still going to have some worries. But people without a million dollars think that same way I thought that. Right. You think money's going to solve all your issues until you get money and you realize, damn, I think I got more issues. I got more things to solve. More money, more problems. Boy, this world is crazy. It's the insurance behind sports. You don't have to go pro anymore like Livy Dunn. She's set for life already because of the Internet. Now, that part is true. Depends on how she spends, of course. Now, let's talk about this because it sounds a little bit LeVar Ball-ish plus 2.0, which was nothing but a Richard Williams version, which was nothing but a Joe Jackson version, right? Now, you could get tremendous results because if the kid is talented, the kid is disciplined, and the kid wants it to a degree, the kid will make it, right? However, what are you doing to the kid in that journey, in that process? It just doesn't feel and sound healthy. Now, the demands that are placed on anybody to make it to the top are gonna be rigorous. Like if you wanna make it, oh, you're gonna do some things that most people, normal people are gonna look side eye at. So I'm not really disturbed with the fact that the kid is disciplined or the kid is eating right, etc. I'm more disturbed that the kid is not voicing himself authentically. The kid is not saying exactly what he wants to say. You could be a beast on the field and still be an emotional 10 year old kid who says, yeah, I'm him. And that's the end of that answer. It doesn't have to come out with bravado. It doesn't have to come out like he's a 24 year old already in the NFL at a press conference. That part I'm going to watch and witness as it continues to evolve. But I look forward to talking to baby Gronk and his daddy, having both of them on this show to talk through why y'all name yourselves at the casinos, why y'all going out there dieting at 10 years old. Interesting conversations. Look forward to having them with this. But let me know what you think about this story in the comments, because a lot of my friends hate Baby Gronk's story right now, and I'm always the one supporting them. I like little kids getting love. I like little kids getting lauded, praised for their efforts and discipline and greatness. Hopefully, it continues that way in a positive way. Thank <laughs> you.